Seems like a quaint little town. Considering where we've been, huh? Mm-hmm. Very, very sad case. You're not really talking about one murder here. You're talking about two. 16 years ago, 17-year-old Marceau Gonzalez was found shot to death in an alley next to her home. But there was also another victim, her unborn son, Andrew. She was at term on her pregnancy, too, wasn't she? She was yeah. ready to have that baby. This is a rare case because the Cottonwood police have one main suspect, but they've never been able to find enough evidence to bring charges. You have motive all over the place on the part of the baby's daddy and his new girlfriend. The night that it happened, his absence is unexplained. Where it happened is feet away from his house. In my mind, this case is already solved. But what we need to do is make it stronger so that the prosecutor here is proud of it and ready to present it to a jury. The problem with this case is that there are so many witnesses, but many of them have been afraid to talk. There were threats being made, there were rumors flying around, and people were afraid. Maybe after all these years, somebody has a conscience and will say what they know. And I can't even imagine having to go to her family and tell them at the end of our time here that we still don't have any answers. It has been 16 years and still no answers. At least consider her killing a cold case. Years later, the case is still unsolved. There are so many cold cases out there just waiting to be solved. The crime scene ultimately tells the story of the murder. We want to bring justice to these victims. Thank you, baby. Hi, Chief. Hello. Hello. Howdy. I'm Kelly. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. Looking forward to working with you. The Cottonwood Police Department has always been determined to solve this case from the very moment that it happened. Today, police continue to follow up on all leads they have in this case, but they have yet to make an arrest. Since then, they've put up silent witness posters. They've done everything they possibly could to try and get some leads. Silent Witness is offering a $1,000 cash reward. And remember, you never have to give your name. I firmly believe that there was a lot of intimidation that occurred after the case the main suspect was believed to have been involved with gangs so when you hear that you know people are going to be afraid to talk i've got young girls at home they're now teenage girls um so it resonated with me because of the fact that marisol was shot and killed and the baby was left to suffocate and die the plain cruelty of that alone drove me to not stop on this case we've had her picture up for years seeing her gravesite her smile it uh, it haunts you and it drives you to do everything you can to find the answers hey boys girls ladies good morning hey how are you sergeant moore i'm on the parade on, nice to meet you too glad you guys are here we brought in homicide investigators alan brown and armando perez to help with this case which is really good because we have almost 90 people that we need to find and talk to todd i think i found wow. a fellow nerd here wow that's kind of ocd ain't all buddy high five there todd is a beautiful nerd kind of like i am he knows everything and he's got it all prepared and he's got a plan and we're going to make that plan work Todd, start with telling us the story from the very beginning. In March 24th, 1997, Marisol Gonzalez, 17 years old, nine months pregnant, was out of high school for the first days of spring break. About 10 o'clock that night, Marisol received a phone call. She left wearing slippers, a pair of sweatpants, and a light jacket. And that's the last she's seen again by her family. Finally, by about five o'clock in the morning, they make an official missing persons report. At about 6.58 that morning, Ruben Molina, who lived right across the street from where Marisol's body was found, looks out and sees a person laying in the alleyway. She realizes that it's Marisol with a gunshot wound to the face. Ruben doesn't speak very good English, so he has his son call 911. How the is go? There's some girl, like, in the middle of the alley, laying down. Where at? And her eyes are, like, purple. And over here we have the father of the baby, Cecilio Cruz. The Cottonwood Police Department feels very strongly that Cecilio is Marisol's killer. So the goal here is to see if we can build a strong enough case to warrant an indictment and put him behind bars. What all reasons can we think of for motive? Baby's daddy. Baby daddy? At 17 years old, that's got to be a huge worry about finances. And where she's found dead in the alleyways, where they normally meet. The bamboo is where they regularly met. 
Okay. Regular meeting place. He doesn't have an alibi for the time. Cecilio claims that he went to bed at 10 o'clock the night of the murder and didn't get up until the next morning. Marisol let the portable phone. Uh, when that phone was found at the morning that they found her body, they hit the redial on that phone, and the phone number that rang back to was the crew's home. He says, I never talked to Marisol because... I guess you really can't prove he actually talked to her. The phone call is important because you had this phone that at one point made a call to Cecilio's house, but you can't establish for sure that one spoke to the other. If there's a way to prove that Cecilio was the last one to talk to Marisol, that's one more way to strengthen our case. Because he has always said he never spoke to her at all the night of the murder. Todd, how did he act when he heard about her? He never asked how she died. He didn't inquire at all. Was she hit by a truck? Died given childbirth? That's definitely odd. Doesn't ask about the baby. Other than makes a statement that he knows the baby's okay. You haven't heard that? The baby's all right, though. The baby's all right? She has got to have a baby. Why is the baby all right and she's not? Well, I don't know. What happened to her? That's what I'm asking you. All I know, the baby's all right. It's yeah. not a question. Right, it's a statement. It's a statement. Okay, I'm going to quote it. That was that very first interview before they even told him that Marisol was killed. We're going to put up Danny Cruz next. There are two other people police are looking at with regard to the planning or the covering up of the murder. One of them is Cecilio's older brother, Danny Cruz, who is accounted for at the time of the murder. This is we just don't know exactly what he, he was doing keeps changing his timelines. And that... Danny, his consistently moving story. <laughs> When you listen to Danny Cruz's original police interviews, he keeps changing his timelines, and that raises a red flag. You left Cecilio at home alone. Yeah. Now, you didn't tell me that the other day. Yeah, I know. At the other interview, when you told me that you knew Cecilio could have never left the house because you were there, there was a time when you didn't know where Cecilio was. Five minutes. But there was a time. You didn't tell me that. No, I didn't. Do. Okay. We need to figure out whether Danny helped set up Marisol's murder or if he might have aided Cecilio in hiding evidence after she was killed. How much do y'all care that he's a drug dealer? If they're making threats, that gives that credence to it. I'm a drug dealer using that machismo thing. There were rumors around town that Danny and Cecilio might have been involved in gang activity, and that could have kept some witnesses from coming forward. There's even a crazier rumor out there that Marisol might have been murdered by rival gang members trying to set Cecilio up. A story that Cecilio himself was happy to perpetuate. You think these guys, they wanted the police to go after you, make it look like you did it? Because they know where I live, they know where she lives. Right. Are, are they gangbanger types? Yeah. Okay, so last but not least, Kylie Oso. Kylie was Cecilio's new girlfriend, and kind of like Danny, we wonder if she knows more about the murder. We need to find that out in order to determine how to move forward with her. She was pregnant. That's the biggest thing. She now found out she's also pregnant. I see her looking at Marisol as this person who's always going to have a tie to Cecilio, and that's a problem for her. So Cecilio's got the old girlfriend pregnant, the new girlfriend pregnant. He's a really busy guy. This week is all about trying to build a rock-solid case against Cecilio. We're going to need to find witnesses who can poke holes in Cecilio's alibi that night and find witnesses who know more about Marisol's phone activities. We also need to dispel this rumor that Marisol might have been killed by gang members who were trying to pay back Cecilio for something. And finally, we've got to figure out what kind of involvement Danny and Kylie may have had in Marisol's murder. We'll catch you guys in a little bit. Good luck. Hi. Hello. How are you? Doing good. Come on in. We're excited to meet y'all. Uh, same here. What are you thinking? Uh, a lot of me. Yeah, it's hard to forget. How do you forget? I can't. Can you talk about that day? And it was March 24th. The next day she was going to have a baby. The very next day? Yeah. My uncle's wife let us borrow the truck but I could take my sisters to the doctor's appointment. And when we got there, I saw Cecilia and Kylie also sitting there. And there's only one reason to be at that doctor's office, right? That she was pregnant. At the same time? Yeah. Wow. That night, I had a long distance phone call. So my sister kept going in and out of the room, telling me that she was waiting for a phone call. Who was she waiting for a call from? Cecilia. All right. Did you hear the other line click in? Yeah. But you didn't answer? I didn't answer. When you give her the phone, do you see her dialing or talking on the phone? No, she just took the phone outside. And then what did you do? I went to bed, and, and then... my mom woke me up, asking me was my sister. So they went looking for her. Okay. 
That morning, one of our neighbors came up to us and told us that they had seen a bunch of cups around the corner. So they took us over there and she was covered in the yellow plastic. And I saw her black slippers. I knew it was her. I couldn't see her, but I knew it was my sister. And you knew the baby was gone too. Well, I, I hope that one day you get to see a trial. Mm -hmm. yeah. We're gonna have justice for her and her son. If you could, can you walk us and show us the route, the shortcut? Yes. Yeah. Are we going to the alley? Yeah. And for her to get there, is this the way she walked? Yeah. <laughs> this is where they found her. Okay. We need to talk about some stuff with the preachers that y'all don't want to hear. Okay. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Think positive thoughts. Oh. And we'll see you hopefully in about a week. All right. Okay. You did good. I don't think you. We're investigating the 1997 murder of Marisol Gonzalez and her unborn son with the hope of trying to put together a strong enough case against her ex-boyfriend, Cecilio Cruz. Usually when you have a crime scene, it's inside some kind of building, a house, a garage, and it's static. The only thing significant about this crime scene, and it's huge, is that it's in that alleyway. That's where she was? Yeah, right here. The head was up this way. And feet are down this feet way. Feet down this way. Now, they never actually determined what the caliber of this gun was, right? That's correct. They knew it was a small caliber, but they couldn't identify it. Correctly. Okay. We know the bullet entered the left cheek. It went from left to right. I would say I probably have a right-hand shooter. And whoever's in front of her produces this gun. Out of a natural reaction, a lot of people will grab it. But sights are really sharp. I'm wondering if she got that cut from the sight on top of that gun that she might have actually even pulled the gun up slightly, causing, you know, the shot to actually go through her cheek versus maybe in the chest. The apartment right there. Our gunshot witnesses. Yeah, Ruben's there. Okay. Ruben Molina, back in 1997, lived in an apartment that directly overlooked the alley where Marisol's body was found. Ruben had a very unobstructed view. Right, straight through, there's no doubt. You can see the buildings. It's time to start talking to witnesses to see if we can find out any more information that will help us definitively say if Cecilia was the killer or if anyone else could have been involved. Ruben Molina is first on the list. Are you Ruben? Yeah. Nice to meet you. I'm Kelly. Yeah, I don't think. Okay. Queremos hablar de que pasó a Marisol. Okay. Recuerdas? Yeah. Ruben Molina is the person who found her body that morning and in his initial statement he was very clear about what he saw and what he heard we want to confirm that statement and also see if there's anything else you might know because there are a lot of rumors floating around town that he actually saw what happened lo que pasó es que como a las 4 de la mañana ese día yo, yo desperté y iba a ir al baño y cuando desperté oí, oí un sonido y un balazo es como pistola si sí, la pistola as soon as Ruben starts talking, things aren't adding up. Multiple witnesses report hearing a gunshot around 12.30 a.m., nowhere near 4. Y mi poquitos minutos después, oí otro, pero más claro. Para mí es el 22, no, o sea, no, no, no muy fuerte. Y al, al rato como ese, one door es, es la que de acá, y de acá es... Now he's talking about not just one shot, but two. And now he can say they're from a 22 that happened at four o'clock in the morning. And now he's adding in a car squealing away from the scene. So you hear like a car door slam and a motor yeah. gunning around what time? Before, before the five. Before five. Before five. There's never been any evidence or reports of a car being involved in this crime at all. I'm, I'm confused. A mí me preguntaron, yo dije lo que me preguntaron así como usted. This man knows a lot more than he's telling us today, and you can only think that he's intimidated or afraid to tell all that he knows for some reason. He ain't telling the truth. He's just exactly right. And we ain't gonna get him to tell the truth. Nope, you're not. Hi, Mr. Lomelli. 
Valentin Lomeli is Marisol's uncle, and he knows Ruben Molina and a lot of other people involved in this case and has for a long time. Talking to him about that night and any intimidation that might have been going on could shed some light on a lot of new things. I feel she was in because uh, I know her when she got that 10 months old. Valentin Lomeli was at the scene that morning when Marisol's body was found and identified. We saw the body right there covered with a with shit. Everybody got crazy. I don't know if I can take care of my wife, my brother, my sister-in-law. It's crazy. Did there come a time where you talked to Ruben Molina? He tried to cover because Ruben, Ru Ruben is a godfather to Cecilio. Cecilio oh. godfather. Yeah. You don't know that? No. Yeah, he kind of left that out. So that's why, that's what we think. He's protecting wow. him. Yeah, they protect him. Absolutely. Now that we know the truth about Ruben Molina's relationship with Cecilio, it explains why he told us that new story about what happened that night. It fits more closely with that rumor about Marisol being killed by gang members trying to get revenge on Cecilio. So now we need to try and find a reliable witness who can talk about the shooting. Thank you, huh? Thank you, sir. According to the offense report, one of Ruben's neighbors, a young girl named Kayla Thomas, may have witnessed something that night. Kayla Thomas doesn't live in town anymore, but Chief Fanning has agreed to go back to that apartment and show us exactly what she told him so long ago. Kayla was sitting in here doing her homework Okay. when she heard the gunshot. I thought it was just a tire popped, and my mom got mad at me in the morning. I asked, I asked if I heard anything. I said, yes. She's like, why didn't you wake me up? Because there's some girl dead out here. She comes on out to the balcony because she can hear the dog barking, and she comes out here. Oh, now look at this view. That's she can exactly see the all view. All the way down that street. She can see all the way up this street. Kayla specifically mentioned seeing no cars. That'll be a perfect counter to Ruben's inconsistent story. She sees no cars, no people. There's nothing but the dogs right over there. Wow. But she could not see Marisol from here. It was dark. And she does not see a car leaving. Right. It's pretty ridiculous to think that gang members are going to do a drive-by and then take off on foot. Think about this. Cecilio's house is straight down this alleyway off to the left, right? Correct. 150 yards maximum. He could be back at his house in no time. 20 seconds. In the same window of time where he can't explain where he is. The only escape route is to Cecilio's house. A jury is going to love her. If she can remember everything as well as she used to, she's going to be a great witness. The next morning, she finds out that a 17-year-old is laying there dead, and that was that bang she heard. That's going to stick with you the rest of your life. We have so many witnesses we need to talk to that we need to have a plan. And Todd has drafted three of his uh, guys to go out and look for people and beat the streets and knock on doors and bring them down here. And boy, are we glad they're here. There's a hope that when we start talking to all these people, we find somebody new that has never come forth before. Most of the friends of the main players were in high school at the time this happened. Everybody's 17 years old at the time of the murder. Everybody's grown up and they've scattered to the wind. I have never driven so many miles for a murder. It's exhausting being in a car for that long a period of time. I wish I could remember more. I really do. Do you remember Danny at all? Acting nervous, acting unusual? No. That was a bust. One zoom going from one city to the next. She's telling me that she's out of the country. We drove like 1,600 miles in two days. We had to stop and get new tires. All the rumors on the east are we're talking to a lot of people, but so far nobody's given us anything really direct that we can use. She wouldn't even give me her phone number here. You want to get information that's not just gossip and rumor and hearsay. Kylie went crazy, did something to Marisol, and Cecilia was such an idiot that he would do anything Kylie said. Well, Kylie's a bitch. Pretty much what we've been told she by is. everyone. She is. Marty and her had gotten into arguments at school. I mean, Kylie yelled at her. Oh kill you bitch in the real world as exhausting as it is you have to talk to every single witness because you never know when you're going to find that one that turns out to be the jackpot that night i was at their house marisol was talking to another friend okay hold up so see this is new information so i didn't even know you were at the house the night of the night it happened yeah we're in the house Marisol was on the phone with Lupita. She says, hey, I'm getting a call from Cecilio. Can hey. I call you back? I'm like, wait, what'd you just say? She doesn't know it's important. 
You have to remember, Cecilio says that he didn't talk to Marisol at all the day of the murder. So we could be catching him in a pretty important lie. You know, you would think by now we know why we never give up on a witness and we don't blow anybody off because you just never know what's going to happen. Sometimes they lead you to other people that years ago no one even knew. You know, if I could dream up a witness that I wish we had, it would be Lupita. We need to find her. We need to talk to her. While the Cottonwood Police Department is looking for Lupita, we need to try and find somebody who can give us a better perspective onto what was happening inside Danny and Cecilio's house that very night. It could be that Connie Sanchez is that person. My name is Alan Brown, and I'm a retired police officer homicide detective from Houston, Texas. Oh. According to the police report, two of Danny's friends, Gabriel Lamas and Ernie Rojo, stopped by the house that night around 3 o'clock in the morning, which we think is a couple of hours after Marisol was killed. Well, I'm very sorry to hear about Ernie, your son. The kids, I mean, we always thought we were going to go before them. Ernie is now deceased. That's it's supposed to be. But his mom, Connie Sanchez, heard Ernie and Gabriel talking about what happened that night the very next morning. They were out on the porch, and I can hear them. I can hear, you know, you hear mumbling to talking. And then I heard something about, yeah, that Mario so got killed or something like that. So I got, got closer to the window so I could hear. Okay, so tell me what you're hearing when you're standing there listening. They said they wanted a place to sleep. Mm -hmm. And Danny and Cecilio said, go ahead and crash. We got to leave. We'll be back. Oh, that's new. But I remember the boys talking, and they said that when they came back, they were nervous about something. They said they were both sweating. They kept wouldn't stay up. They were tweaking. They were running to window to window. Really? But Ernie didn't. They didn't Ernie know. told you that? Yes. But they didn't know at the time what had happened that night. So she can't make all this up. She knows exactly what happened. She knows the whole thing from Gabriel and Ernie talking when she's listening at the window. They leave. We've never heard that before. That could be where they lose the gun and the phone. Then I went out on the porch and I said, well, who died, Ernie? What happened? He says, Marisol. I said, who's that? He says, Cecilio's girlfriend. I says, what happened to her? He says, they killed her. Then I went out on the porch and I said, well, who died, Ernie? He says, Marisol. I said, who's that? He says, Cecilio's girlfriend. I says, what happened to her? He says, they killed her. Now we need Gabriel to say this story. He can testify to it. I wish it would all be like her. Well, yeah, I, I mean, I, I don't doubt anything she says at all. She is never going to testify in the courtroom because yeah. everything she knows is hearsay. You have witnesses who provide you with actual information who one day will be able to testify in a court of law, like Ernie Rojo could have, and hopefully Gabriel Lamas will. And the rest of them are information type witnesses that help you question these people. Now that you know what she says Gabe and Ernie say happened, can you get in Gabriel to say it? Our next step is to talk to Gabriel Lamas and hope that he can corroborate some of the things that Connie Sanchez just told us. Gabriel was invited over to the house to party and ended up staying the night, so he'll be privy to the conversations between Danny and Cecilia. How about Cecilia? Did you see Cecilia when you went I over there? I didn't see Cecilia at all. No? No. So do you remember Danny acting funny or acting unusual? He wasn't. No? No, not to me he wasn't. But you never saw Cecilia? Never saw. Did Danny even tell you where Cecilia was? No, he didn't say anything about him. And then you go to uh, Ernie's house? I drop him off, yeah. So I go on the porch and talk up on the porch? You remember that? If you really don't have any more information, the answer is, I don't, I don't know anymore. I want to say we talked, but I don't... But he'd think long and hard, there'd be a long, quiet pause. I can't remember. And then he'd start shaking his head no, and then he'd look up and say, I just don't have anything else to offer. No matter what you said back then, no matter what, all we're after is the exact truth and what you can remember. You know, you have your own family. That baby was nine months in one week. It's full term and it's dead. We know you're at the house that night. You're there at a prime time. And you can see in Gabe's eyes that he's scared. He's fearful to say anything. 
I, I look at your face and you look to me like you're still fearing Cottonwood. I think those guys' threats are empty. To be honest with you, yeah, I've lived with that fear. And I hear you say that they're nobodies and, and this and that, but... You want to see Marisol's baby? I really don't, man. I don't want to creep you out, man, but I want you to look at it. I felt like I've talked about this and explained everything on my perspective of it, what I saw, what I heard. The path of a man's soul is through his eyes. I really don't have anything. And when I was getting drilled all them years, I just, I don't have anything. Do we feel there's more there with Gabriel? Absolutely. But because of what happened that night to Marisol, I think he's afraid it could happen to him. So what are we missing, man? What are these What are these people done? I mean, either they know they that they killed Marisol, and if you can kill a nine-month pregnant woman, then you can kill anybody. I think that's right. right. Talking to Gabe was a little disappointing, but there were other people that were invited over to the house that night, so let's go try and find them. Was Danny out at the party as well? Danny was, yeah. We were at a party at Mormon's Crossing. Mm -hmm. But did Danny give you a time he wanted you back at his house? No, he just said to meet at his house. And I think it was because it was boring, so he said, come back to my house. What time do you think that was that y'all went over there? Between 11 and 12 sometime. When we went and showed up at his house. One of us got out to see if he was home. Nobody ever answered the door. We waited for a while, and the house was completely black. Nobody ever showed up, so then we left. With all of those people coming and going that night and Cecilio claiming that he was asleep, we need to take a look at the layout of that house or what's left of it. The city burned it down, it was condemned. The foundation is still there. It was actually a three bedroom house, a little less than 900 square feet, I believe. Cecilio claims that he went to bed around 10 o'clock that night with all of those people coming and going. And seeing this house and how very small it is makes that claim seem just a little bit ridiculous. So people are beating on the front door. Right. There's no way you couldn't hear it. No. I mean, if the phone's ringing, you know they heard it. That's, so that's weird. Why are they lying about that? You only lie for one reason. That's exactly it. You're trying to cover something up. Hearing from all the people that Danny invited back to his house the night Marisol was killed not only puts major holes in Cecilio's alibi, but it raises questions as to what Danny knew and when he knew it. Being able to see the crew's house up close and knowing all that we do about Danny's actions that night, we need to see whether or not he's involved in this crime to the degree that charges are warranted against Danny. Let's look at it while we have under Danny Cruz. We're always going to wonder, is he guilty of tampering with evidence? The gun, the phone, but the statute of limitations is 10 years and this is a 16-year-old case. So is he guilty of being involved in the capital murder? No. I think he's got a good alibi for the time. Everybody else, um, including the girl he was out with, puts him out too much later. It's ridiculous to think that Danny would be inviting friends over if he knew Cecilio was planning on killing Marisol. This basically eliminates the possibility that he was involved before this all went down. All right, so we're going to mark Danny Cruz off the board. Now that we believe that Danny Cruz can't be charged with being involved in this crime, we need to focus on someone who was very close to Cecilio at that time, and that's Calioso. Kylie, I'm Sergeant Moore, Cottonwood Police Department. How you um, doing, Alan Hi. Kylie's welcoming, invites us into the home. Once we get inside, disaster strikes. Mom. You're Kathy. Yes. Yeah. And then her mother's head popped out of a back room, and here she came. Dragging her name through the mud. We couldn't go down the road without people flipping her off. I, I can tell you right now what happened. What happened? I had Navajo taco dinner for my whole neighborhood. Tara, my daughter, gave Cecilio a ride home. When he met with his girlfriend in the alley that night, they thought it was Kylie. They shot the wrong girl. So your theory is, is that Marisol is shot by these guys because they thought it was her. I think they thought it was Kylie. But Cecilia was standing there when they shot her? Okay, you guys are ridiculous. You won't even listen to the truth of what happened. I think you understand. It's just because of her relationship with the people that were involved in this is why her name is always going to come up in the investigation until it gets solved. Todd was able to kind of slice mom over to the kitchen and get into a different conversation with her, and which gave me the opportunity to talk to Kylie. Did he didn't always deny to you talking or seeing uh, 
Marisol. And did you believe him? She had the same reaction and look as Gabriel. She would play with the pillow, little to no eye contact. And the only time she would make eye contact is when you're talking about things other than the murder case. How many kids you got? Four? Yeah. Then she'd look up and she'd answer. And then you say, well, let's talk about Marisol's death and her baby. And then she'd look down. All right, we'll call you. Try to have a good evening. Thank you for understanding. What a f***ing nightmare that was. You did great, man. You just salvaged it talking to her. And so if there's ever an expression, when you get lemons, make lemonade, we made a lot of lemonade today. <laughs> Let's go back. We've got a long way. All she's doing is covering up, knowing something afterwards. The statute of limitations is run on her just like it has on Danny, and she can't be charged for anything. But if she is involved in the planning or preparation of the crime in any way or in assisting, she could still be charged as a co-defendant. With Kylie refusing to participate in a formal sit-down interview, we're very excited that Lupita is agreeing to come down and talk to us. Every time we run into somebody on this list that turns us on to somebody else, we go talk to them, which is how we got to you. And as it turns out, you might be like one of the most important people of all. You know, I think about that before to come and I don't know why I came and say something I was afraid. Okay. And I called Marisol and because I was going to Mexico and I knew she was going to have the baby really soon. So I said, do you like this kind of shoes? And we started talking about baby stuff. So when I was talking to her, when she says, hold on, Cecilia is calling me. Those words came out of her mouth. Yeah. Like oh, yeah, phone. yeah, yeah. And then she, she answered me back and she says, I'll call you back. And I say, OK, that's fine. You're the last person mm -hmm. on this earth mm -hmm. who talked to Marisol before Cecilia. This got to me a lot because I saw the baby when they were in the coffin. And I, I can get those images from my brain and then I know they will never go away. Lupita is great. And Lupita can say he called her that night within hours of her being shot dead and found in the alley. And she told me, I'll call you back. It's Cecilia on the other line. Lupita is a living, breathing, heart beating example of I never came forward because I was scared. Because Lupita has come forward with this new information, our case against Cecilio just got a whole lot better. Now it's time for us to go talk to Cecilio Cruz directly and see what he has to say about this new evidence. Just get anything out of him, we'll be happy. Okay. We'll just be Absolutely. listening. Absolutely. All right. I am super stoked. But right, here we go. To be able to talk to Cecilio Cruz. We arrive at his place of work, asked to speak to Cecilio as a witness in a crime, Okay, I appreciate it. Thank you very much. You so Todd and I had decided before Cecilio ever entered the room that we would approach him with, we've got new information that has reopened the investigation into your son's murder, Andrew. I'm Sergeant Moore, Cottonwood Police Department. How you doing? I'm Alan Brown. Can I talk to you for a minute? And he had no emotion, nothing. He listened, and then he said, I just want an attorney present, if that's okay with you guys. I mean, this is about your son. Yeah, I know. I, I know what it's about. I mean, you got nothing to hide, right? Absolutely not. I just want to, you know, make sure everything's cool and uh, it's just one of my rights and uh, That's all for him. Everybody has a constitutional right to a lawyer, and that's good. But we're talking about a man whose baby was murdered. If your baby was murdered, would you be asking for a lawyer? I will say this. He's still pretty cocky. Yeah, he is. Well, he's not going to go home and sleep so well tonight because he knows this is back on the radar. Okay, we talked to everybody we could possibly think of to talk to. With Kylie shutting us down and Cecilio choosing to lawyer up, we need to sit down and figure out whether or not we all believe there's enough evidence here to present this case to the DA. What we have up here is pretty darn good evidence. I mean, you have motive all over the place. Think about the pressure of Cecilio seeing both of his girlfriends pregnant together at the doctor's office. The whole time window. He cannot truly explain where he was between 10.30 and 12.30. With all of the activities and traffic in and out of the house that night. One of us got out to see if he was home. Nobody ever answered the door. It's ridiculous for Cecilio to try and claim he slept through all that. 
And we can disprove the theory that gang members shot Marisol by refuting Ruben Molina's statement with the much more credible Kayla Thomas. His lies the next day, I had no contact with Marisol at all that whole day, and now you have Lapita. I was talking to her when she says, hold on, Cecilia's calling me. Who says, I was on the phone with Marisol when he did call her, and I know he was the very last person she talked to while she breathed on this earth. Think about that. All this evidence that you have goes right back to Cecilio, every single thing. When I opened this up again, I took it with a clear mind. I didn't use anything that was done before. I wanted to find my own reasons, and everything led back again to Cecilia. I mean, I'm up in the air about Kylie, but if you think about the good of the case and the solving it, you need her. You don't need her as a suspect, you need her on your side. Well, you could get there by offering her immunity. There's a strategy you could pursue. I don't think the case is gonna get any better at this point. We've done everything we can do. I'm ready. Oh, wow. Chocolate cake. Chocolate. Yummy. To the cold justice team, just a small token of my appreciation for all of your dedication and assistance. This has meant the world to my husband, as I know it does to the Gonzalez family and the city of Cottonwood. Mrs. Detective Sergeant Todd Moore, a.k.a. Jennifer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so do we eat it now or do we wait on Todd? He's going to come in and give us good news and then we'll cut it. Okay. It's Todd and the chief. Hey. Oh. Looks happy. What'd they say? Well, there's a few more things they want us to follow up on, um, but they have promised to move forward to a grand jury for an indictment. Sweet. Sweet, sweet. That's, sweet. Sweet. that's, that's awesome. awesome. Are you yes. happy? Are you happy? Yay, yay, yay. That's awesome. Very awesome. Very good help, you guys. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. You have God, no idea so how much goodness. this means to us. Well, it's going to mean a lot to that family when we get to go talk to them today, which is such a relief, I think, yeah. for all of us. I didn't know where I was going to go with this because it was just stacks of stuff to do. And it couldn't have got done without you guys' help, so that means a lot for me. I want to say thank you for giving this family some closure and our, our community the ability to heal. Thank you. Well, thanks for inviting us. Thank you. Now there's just one more thing left to do. Ready? Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you? Good, Good to see you again. Good to see you. Good to see you. Hey, how you doing? Hi. Well, good, good. after this week of investigation, I went to the county attorney's office. They agree at this point that we have enough to move forward with Cecilio Cruz. All right. All right. And this guy, yeah. he never gave up. Oh, you don't know the joy that's running through, through me. Just waiting for him to be locked up and do the time that he has to do. ¿Y qué piensa, señora? Yo estoy contenta y espero que... She was saying that... Um, you don't understand that the pain never goes away. She just wants to go hug her child. I don't think that there's anything that we could ever do that, that makes it okay. It's never going to be okay. But the very least that we have to do is make Cecilia responsible for what happened to her child. Para la paz. Peace. Sí. You're awesome, man. Thank you so much. That was a team effort. Oh, we're going to let you go tell your family. The joy I get is being told by the family, you told us you wouldn't stop, and you're a man of your word, because I have a man of my word. <laughs> And I hope that this helps heal some of the pain that's been in Cottonwood for all these years. And I hope it lets people know that justice will be served. God and Sanarsai. Yes. God and Todd. <laughs> <laughs> and they God run. bless you. <laughs> Bye. -bye. I'm proud of all the work that everybody did. I'm, I'm proud that it worked out the way that it did. This was the hardest thing I've ever done. The magnitude of this case, the work we did, the long hours we spent, it is a drop in the bucket to see the closure for that family.